Let's talk about the law of reciprocal inhibition really quick. The law of reciprocal inhibition uh, basically states that when one muscle contracts, it sends a message to the opposing muscle to make it contract less. This law is, is one of the things that the 180 system is uh, built on. It's one of those uh, foundational components that I believe in and when I put this system together, when I put the functional screen together, when I came up with the recipe for injury, when I talk about most ability, this is a huge, huge, huge component. So you've got to understand what the law of reciprocal vision is and what it is not. And there is uh, quite a bit of confusion out there. So let's take uh, a for an example. Let's say I want to bend my elbow. Okay? When I bend my elbow, my nervous system is going to make my bicep contract. My bicep is then in turn going to send a message back through what's called an inhibitory interneuron to go to the tricep to tell the tricep to contract less so I can have motion occur. If my bicep contracts and my tricep contract equally, now I have no motion. I'm stuck in this position. We have tetany. So this has to contract this has to contract less. Now notice I'm not saying this has to relax because if I have this pull with too much force and this completely relax, now I've just screwed up the joint kinematics at my elbow. So one muscle contracts, the opposing muscle contracts less. There still has to be an equal give and take so that joint sits in the right position. Now one, one of the misconceptions out there is that if I have, let's say, uh, a tight iliopsoas. That means I have weak abdominals. And the misconception here is that the iliopsoas was tight first, causing the abdominals to become inhibited or weak. This is actually backwards. What happens is those abdominals become inhibited. They become weak and nobody tells the iliopsoas to contract less they still keep contracting with the same force, pulling me, in, pulling me into an anterior pelvic tilt. Now, how do you fix this situation? You fix the situation by going to what happened first, which is the inhibition of the abdominals, not the hypercontraction of the iliopsoas. If you go stretch the iliopsoas, you'll get the lengthening, you'll get that, that lumbar uh, hyperlodosis to break up a little bit, but you've got nothing to pull that pelvis back forward because you did nothing with the abs, which was the, f was, which was the problem in the first place. So you stretch those lumbar extensors, you stretch that iliopsoas, you let that person come back to a more normal posture, but now they go play golf. Now they go work out. Now they go sit in the car. They go do all those things, which is going to do what? Allow that iliopsoas to hypercontract again because we did nothing to get the abdominals to contract normally to give the iliopsoas the inhibitory response. So what we should have done was got the abs to facilitate a normal contraction. We should have got that neuromuscular junction sensitive in the abdominals to pull that forward which in turn sends a message to the iliopsoas and those lumbar extensors to contract less. So, the law of reciprocal inhibition, in order to use that to your advantage, you have to know where the inhibition is. Reverse that inhibition. That will break up the hypertonicity on the opposite side. That's why we don't stretch tight muscles. That's why we don't foam roll tight muscles. That's why we don't massage tight muscles. The tight muscle is the muscle that's working too hard because it's not getting in the inhibitory response from the muscle that's inhibited. Get those opposing muscles to fire normally. Get that normal neuromuscular facilitation and you will take care of the tightness on the opposing side. Not only will you take care of that, but you'll take care of it for a long amount of time because you're re-educating that. Now, once you get that facilitated, you follow that up with functional uh, A-planar, exercises in a gravity uh, dependent position in the end range of motion in a transverse plane, now you've done your patient, your athlete a huge favor because you've got rid of the problem. You haven't just been massaging out symptoms. So remember, the law of reciprocal inhibition. 
states when one muscle contracts, healthy muscle contracts, it sends an inhibitory response to the opposing muscle to contract less, not to turn off. If that opposing muscle is tight, it's not the opposing muscle's fault. It's that prime mover's fault on the opposite side. Get that prime mover to contract normally and that will take care of the muscle spasm on the opposing side.